and welcome to Getting Your Money's Worth, the show that focuses on value. I'm Judith West, and our guest today is Professor Nir Barzilai, uh, Professor and Director of the Institute for Aging at Albert Einstein College. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, nice being here. Um, nice to have you. Uh, before you became a professor at Albert Einstein, you had an interesting job. You were chief medic for the Israeli army. Oh, yeah, that was ages ago. Well, so what? It still counts, right? It did. It yeah. did count. And, and anyway, and, and on this show, we don't have an expression like ages ago. <laughs> Everything is now. Okay, so tell me, how was it being chief medic of the Israeli army? Uh, it was, uh, you know, first of all, it's something that led to my profession, which is initially MD, and then in some uh, really way that maybe is, is, is too long to explain, it led me to do aging research because you know what happened after I became a medic I went and worked in the world in the third world I worked in Cambodia I worked in Africa and I treated mainly young people right and then I switched somehow and got to I was going to gonna ask you because you know the Israeli army is young people and I was going to ask you how you made that leap from young people to centenarians yeah centenarians so how do you say centenarians centenarians, centenarians. so you know, first of all, there are two answers. First of all, it got very frustrating to treat young people in the third world that were in refugee camps. And you could save their life, but their life was really dependent on a political solution to their situation, which didn't happen. And so I said, you know, I should do something that really makes a difference. So I was looking for something else. Why aging? Because you know, uh, Jim Watson, one of the discoverers of the DNA, says, I don't want to be in a race where there are 20 people. You know, aging research, as, as weird as it sounds, is a new science. And the data is coming out only now, and I want it to be first there. Right. So okay. I there. Uh, and I don't blame you. Um, and, but I want to ask you about this aging research and this science that you talk about. Uh, is the res does the research have an ability to impact on the aging process? Will your research make people live longer? Uh, this is not the goal of my research. My research is, you know, we, we have a maximal potential lifespan, right? We know that people can get to the age of 100. The question is, how do you get to the age of 100 without age-related diseases? Without and, age related. and our goal is to prevent the age-related diseases. Okay. Because you find out when you get those people who are 100 years old and don't take any medication and are healthy, you find that their life is beautiful and they want to continue. By the way, I don't want to interrupt you, but do you know that last year Hallmark sold 85,000 happy 100th birthday cards? Yeah, and I think that's that an astounding number. That more, more is coming. Is the most rapidly uh, growing the population accor according to age. You know, the, there's mo many more hundred years old as percentage that coming into this cohort right. than. But I want to ask you something. Is, is is that genetic? Well, first off, let's start with that. The thing I want to ask you. But how much of that is preordained by? So, yeah, so if yeah. this was the quiz in the boards for geriatrics, the correct answer would be 80% environment and 20% geriatrics. 80% environment. Right. So right, but, but, but hey, it depends who writes the question who writes for the that, question. okay? And, and I don't argue with the fact that the environment is very important for all of us. The reason that I went to centenarians is for them, in them, we discovered the genetic is the main thing is not then and not the environment so when we go to a hundred year old and we say among other questions we say now you tell me why you live to be 100 they have two answers almost always two answers one is what do you mean my mother is 102 and my grandfather was 108 oh, that's it's a two answers. my mother my grandfather right well no that was one oh, answer, that's one answer. Oh, okay right. <laughs> okay but there's a family history of exceptional longevity in the family and then we say, okay, come on, but, you know, give us the real, tr you know, the real story. You ate yogurt all your life. Uh, you were vegetarian. Right. Uh, and no, we, we don't have a single vegetarian. We don't have anybody who exercised or was an athlete. 30% of them were overweight or obese in the 1950s. Remember, the 1950s, nobody was overweight right. or obese. Right. No, you wouldn't remember, but, no, but I, I do. Right. And, I think I said right. And 30% right. and, and, and of them smoked 
a cigarette, I have a woman who celebrated 90 years of two packs of cigarette smoking. Okay? So what I'm saying, in other words, those guys on one hand have family history. On the other hand, they didn't have to play the environment like we need to do. Okay, and I wanted to make clear, we have to play the environment, but if we could discover what are the genetics that protect them from the environment, then we'll be in a position to create a drug that will imitate that. I see, okay. So, in summary, genetics trumps environment. Family history trumps environment. And the goal, is it fair to say the goal of your research is to discover what is the gene that has created longevity in the family history and perhaps be able to develop a therapeutic uh, answer to that gene? Exactly. Okay, good. I'm, 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 I'm glad I'm learning. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I, I, I want to go from the physical, living to be 100, to the mental. Uh, is there a tie-in? The 100-year-olds the, 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 um, that you study, are they mentally sound? Uh, many of them are. So, you know, there's no scientific answer to you for the simple reason that we don't have the control. You know, I can tell you what is their, what, what is their you know, spiritual, psychological attitude thing. If I had something about the people who were born with them but died 40 right. and 50 years ago. So I can tell you traits that they have, but I don't know if those traits are really important. For example, they are optimistic usually. They're optimistic. They don't, they don't have grudges against, you know, I never heard the centenarian say, you know, my daughter-in-law is, you know, I don't hear anything. They don't, have, like they don't carry any of these. No. I, I, wanted to, I have to interrupt you. Don't you study Ashkenazi Jews a lot? And you mean to tell me you find Jewish people that don't have, they'll say anything bad about their daughter-in-law? Well, the hundred years old <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay. You know, ask me about what a daughter-in-law is saying. It's a <laughs> okay. <different> question. Okay. <laughs> we have that control. Right. Okay. Uh, but, so they don't bear any family grudges. But, yeah. And, um, so, so then, uh, so there's actually elements, that, not only that, there are elements in their personality that are also related to some of the genes that we found that is really very interesting. Our genes controlling our attitude, basically. And we have some evidence to suggest that, that they are. But, you know, in other things we're failing. For instance, spirituality. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're spiritual, but, you know, we discovered that I, I don't know what spirituality, when I give it to my team, nobody knows to say what they mean what when it? they yeah. say that they're what spiritual. Yeah. So we thought maybe it's religiosity, you know, maybe it's beliefs, maybe, huh. but, but the correlation between spirituality and religiosity was non-existent in my study, so it's something else. Right. You know, uh, so is it fair to say that happy people live longer? No, I, I, no I, would say, I would say that the people that I have are usually happy, okay? I'm sure that there are many happy people that didn't make it to age 100. But it, happiness seems to be... To be common. Uh, but, but I want to tell you another thing. We assume that personality doesn't change with age. And there is the evidence for that. But the evidence goes maybe to ages 70 and 80. There are family members who tells me, you know, what you see now is what, not what you had 20 years ago. So this even makes, makes it more complex. Do people now always they get older? I thought it was the reverse. Well, but, but you, know, you know what happens until age 80. But what happens to the guy who was 80 and now is 100? I'll, I'll give you as an example my, my grandmother-in-law who's 102 and she's a terrific person. And she retired and she was in Florida and she married a couple of times. Um, but then her... People around her died, her husband died, and she actually started moving back up east, okay, to be with the family, and she had a totally new adjustment, a new life up here that was very different than when she, she was and 80. And she made the transition? And she made the transition even in her personality. Okay, so, you know, when you've talked about personality, and we don't have much time left, but I don't want to leave brain, brain matter, actual gray brain matter. Right. Um, is, is that something that's the function of the personality? What makes some people all very well together at 94, 95, and other folks at, at, at 70 or 75 that are living physically, but mentally they're, they're out to lunch? 
So Pardon the cliche. That's very important because, you know, we found four longevity genes. And one of them is the gene that if people have it, their chances of being totally intact at age 100 are three times higher than any other thing. So it still is, it comes back so to it's genetics. genetics. It comes, it's, it's almost like, right. it's almost like a successful business. What's a successful retail store? Location, location, location. Right. It's almost like the answer is genetics. Right. Gene so, but, but there's a good news about that because yes. this gene that we found and it was validated by other studies. So we know that it plays not only in longevity, but also in, in cognitive function. This gene is now a subject for drug development. So we think that we could actually test what will happen when we'll change this environment biologically so in the brain of everyone. So you think that's down the road there's going to be a pill you take, and if you take this pill, Nuri, you'll live longer and, 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 be, and, stay, and, stay, uh, and stay smart? As, as always, you were, you were correct. I would just sh sh say, I would change it a little bit. I would say that it will protect you from age-related disease, and the side effect will be that you live longer. Okay, you're protected from age. What's an age-related disease? Pneumonia? Di diabetes, diabetes, Alzheimer, right. cancer, uh, yeah. infection uh, diseases. Is, is Alzheimer a preventable disease? Uh, it's not prevent preventable at this stage. But it could be. It could be. It could be, okay. Um, do you like what you do? I love what I do. I can see you have a passion for and, doing and what you do. And that's only part of what I do. So. And you enjoy being around the 100-year-olds? They're, they're such an inspiration. They are, they are just amazing. Well, are these, Some of them are just amazing. Do you bring these people amazing. in for the research? No, we go to them. You go out to their homes? We are do a, people, a little mini reunion. Are these reunion. people that are living in assisted living homes or? In, in, my, in order to join my study, you had to be independently living at age 95. But if you're 105, if you live somewhere else, you're, you're fine. Uh, so, so usually what we do, we do a mini reunion of the family. We take them and their children and their right. son and daughter-in-law. Well, how, and how the sons and daughter-in-laws are in their 80s. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It, 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 sounds, it sounds wonderful. I, I think what you do is uh, And is this, how is this funded? Uh, this is funded all by uh, government money. Government money. Uh, oh, okay. NIH funding. Well, I, I have to say, I like. I, I'm, I'm one for less government. But this sounds. If this is going to make us, if this is going to make us all happier, live longer, be smarter. Um, but if, there's one side of one thing I want to mention. We're almost out of time. What does, what isn't keeping pace with what's going on is that this country is not finding a very good way to use folks who live who live longer. You know, people are not ready to just uh, go into their house and hibernate at 65. And we are not good at finding opportunities for how to keep people that are retired from their workplace, but we don't want them to retire from life. Right. And, and, and there, there have to be a social uh, there adjustment. There has to be some kind of a you, don't, you know, don't forget, you, you don't like uh, the government. I, I don't like the government spending so much, so little money on, on medical research. Right, and, I don't and they like spend it. more money on saving Bernstein Stern than on, right, exactly. on the NIH budget. But are they, and, 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 are they rich to nowhere? And, and not only that, you know, the, for the government, the plan, the plan for the government is for us to work until 65, retire, and die the next day. That's the government plan. Well, that's why there's no more Social Security. And, and, and it's more, com right, and it's more complicated than that. And certainly, you see by my 100 years old that some of them are working still then. So and still contributing. And still contributing. Yeah. Well, was, you were a wonderful guest. Thank you. I hope that we can Thanks. stay in touch with you. I want to, I want to learn more about this as, as we all age. Right. You're watching Getting Your Money's Worth with Judith West. Thank you for watching.